Hey, welcome back creatives and uh, today I have a very special video for you. This is one that I've been wanting to make for a very long time. After seeing a lot of people struggling online, asking for help, uh, posting questions here and there, basically how to set up your model for 3D printing. This is where a lot of people are lacking the skills and the knowledge. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do these kind of things with basically a very generalistic approach. Now you can use whatever software you like. I will be using Mesh Mixer, Cheetubox. These programs are for free, so check out the description below. I'll be posting the links. And so without further ado, let's get stuck into the program. Okay guys, so today we're going to be using the Dragon Turtle model by Lord of the Print. Now, this model I did by myself. I really appreciate the quality of this model, so I thought it would be great to use I bought this through their My Mini Factory page, but I will link their other Patreon page, their Facebook page in the description below. So the reason why I wanted to pick this model particular is it has a lot of odd shapes, ones that you will find as you're busy printing. So today we're going to be using the torso, we're going to be using the head with lots of detail, uh, a base, as well as the tail. So we will also throw in a leg there right at the very end, but I'll go quickly through that. So I made a quick animation for you guys today, basically explaining how DLP printing works, but why we need to pay attention to the orientation. So as you know, a UV light shines at the bottom and the LCD screen um, allows a pattern of that light through to harden a layer of resin on the vat. Now when the build plate rises each time, there's a very large separation force. And it's that separation force that we need to focus on and pay attention to the orientation. So starting out, you, uh, most artists will place their models directly onto the bull plate. Now, yes, technically this does work, but it doesn't give you the best results. When you're trying to remove your model, you might chip at it or you might break it when you're handling it with your hand. And there's also a lot of very uh, variables with your resin. Now the next thing is to just quickly add supports with a very straight model. Now the problem is when you get to a very large model, um, you have a lot of separation force pulling down onto your model when you get to those supports. So as your print starts to develop and you get to the support areas, the supports can't hold onto all of that model all at once and it fails. A lot of the times you will just see the little spikes and the rest of your model will be in your resin vat. You don't want this. So what have we learned so far? Printing your model straight on the build plate is a no-go. Rather, you want to angle your models at a degree of between 10 and 30 degrees. Now this is not an exact science, but this helps prevent failures in the future. Why is that? Because the supports can gradually take hold of your model as it's busy printing and not grab all at once. And well done. Now we understand why we need to rotate our model. So now we're jumping into Mesh Mixer. I've already dragged in my model. We're gonna start off with the torso. So do a quick initial inspection. I've already noticed that there are some red highlights at the top of the model. To get rid of this, let's go to Analysis, Inspector. Just do an auto repair all. We want to do the repairing before we do the hollowing. Sometimes I find Mesh Mixer just kind of finds itself as an issue and it, uh, it fixes things that it shouldn't be. So do the inspector first. Now we want to move our model above the build plate or the grid. So let's just go to edit, transform and move your model. Now we're going to rotate the model. I would like to have the, the spikes pointing upwards and all the supports I'm going to try and keep at the neck and shoulders where there's not gonna be much detail. I'm gonna be gluing the head over this. We want the, uh, the spikes on the side to point upwards so we don't have to add supports to those at a later stage. Once you're happy with the orientation, click accept. Now go to edit, hollow, and we're going to hollow out our model. I like to start off with at least a 1.8 millimeter um, shell distance. This is just for starting out. You can go thinner, but I find this is really good. Make sure you update it, and then we're gonna insert our holes. So generate your holes. Now I need at least three, but it's only giving me two. So increase your slider up to four and say update holes. It's very frustrating, but I'm not even too sure why this happens. Once you have your three holes, 
I position two at the bottom. Why is that? Because we have a very large hollow. You need more holes at the bottom to allow for breathing. And the one at the top is just for drainage. Now that we have that set up, let's save this model and we're going to go on to the head model next. Once you've drag and dropped a head model, this I wanted to show you, we have a lot of detail that we want to preserve. This is going to be a focal point. So I would like the face to be pointing upwards so we don't have to add support to this area. All the supports I want to hide onto areas that I'm going to glue or are not going to be focal points. So let's go to edit, transform, and we're going to rotate our model so the teeth are pointed directly upwards. A lot of people, when they're starting out, they rotate the face downwards to try and preserve those little side spikes or stuff like that. We're not going to preserve those. We want more detail in the face. So make sure your face and teeth are pointed upwards. Once you have your orientation that you like, just click accept. Next, go to hollow. We're going to hollow out our mesh. We know already we want to go to a 1.8 to start off with. Make sure you update your mesh and generate holes. Now, we want to add, or I prefer to add a hole right onto the key. The reason why I do that is when I am uh, painting it, I put in a skewer or a kebab stick, and that makes it very easy to paint your items individually. Once you like your orientation, click accept and we'll move on to the next model. There you can see the hole is perfectly aligned into the key. Next up, I would like to show you a base. We're not going to spend too long on this. You guys already know the positioning, the hollowing and the transforming. I just wanted to show you where I add the drainage holes onto a base. So try and put it in the joining lines or where I'm going to be gluing the two pieces of the base together. This hides the holes when we glue it later on. Um, instead of putting it at the very bottom, yes, you can fill the hole and then sand it flat, but if you've got an area which will be hiding it later once you've glued, uh, glued it all together, rather do that. Okay guys, so jumping into Chi2 box now, I have already dragged and dropped in my torso model. We know it's at the correct orientation. So the only thing that's left to do now is to raise our model at least six mils off the build platform. Go to supports top right hand corner and click platform. This will create supports for our model. Here are uh, the settings that I like to use. This is a good starting point. The reason why we raise our model at least six to eight mils off the build platform is because the temperature variation in your resin at the very basis kind of uh, changes a lot. So you could have warping. There's a lot of different things that happen at the very ground level. Now that the supports are done, we're going to remove some of them. So you can click on the minus button and actually select more than one model at a time. Once you have the models that you want removed selected, these models I'm busy choosing are ones that aren't going to add any support. Without these models, those spikes will still be printing. That's shoulder support. Okay, so once you're done, click minus. Now I'm going to re-add some supports. I like to add some more on the side just for structure. So when this model is busy printing, it is a larger model. It just gives it a little bit more support um, on the X and Y. I add an extra support to the keys just because I really want those to not fail. Once you're done, click slice. Go through your model and look through the slices to find any islands that start without any supports or um, places from the base of your model. Right now I've found one. That little piece of the model has got no grounding. It's got no supports underneath it. So what we need to do is go back, remove all supports, and we're going to re-add, but re-add all supports. Again, I'm going to have to do the same thing that I did earlier. So I'm just going to rush through all of this. You guys don't need to see that again. I'm removing the supports, adding the side ones again, and click slice. Now when we go through our model, 
we can see there are supports on the inside of the model, but that little island has now got some grounding with the support that will make sure it prints. Click save with your model and you're done. Pick whatever printer you want and you're good to go. I would like to just add that when we have supports on the inside of the model, that's okay, that's fine. Leave them there, they're not gonna do any damage. Now with the head, let's raise it again, six mils off the build plate, go to supports. We know we want the details at the very top of the head and any um, supports we want at the back of the head. This is going to create a bit of damage. So all important details face upwards and all things that are not gonna have detail or not important detail just um, facing downwards where your supports will be. There will be a lot of scarring, uh, places that you'll have to sand. Um, now look out for the little spikes that you want to add more supports to. I'm trying to click on this spike, but my angle is not, um, is not correct. So just give yourself a little bit more angle, so it'll make a little bit more of a red area, and that will allow you to add some more supports. Having one final look, I know I want to maybe add one or two just to the base to guarantee this model will be printing. A lot of the times a support might fail and your key just doesn't get printed or the side of your model doesn't get printed. It will eventually start printing, but you lose some detail. Some of these spikes on the top, I know I'm gonna lose the little spikes, but try and get to as many spikes as you can. These are my printer settings. Now, most of them are not that important, but your layer height is five microns. Your bottom layer count should be at least six. Your exposure time for each individual layer is six. Your bottom exposure is a minute. So just copy my, copy my settings. This is a good basis. Just keep in mind, you want your bottom lift speed to be at least 20. A lot of these standard settings um, are way too high and I mean, I think I opened up uh, an acubic photon and it was something at like 70 for your bottom lift speed. Not so good. So I've sliced my model again. Just go through it one last time. Have a look. See what, um, see what stands out or doesn't have any islands. I've already noticed one little one, but that's a tiny little detail. You don't have to worry about that. It's not going to make the inside of my model fail. Right. Save your model out to whatever version you want. A lot of these will offer your specific printer. I'm printing with an anacubic photon, so that's what I want. So next up, we have the leg. Now, I want to preserve the spikes at the very top of the model. And I've already showed you how to do your supports and hollowing. So I'm going to um, just carry on. I'm just going to do my thing while I tell you why I chose this leg as a demonstration. Sometimes you will get a model that will be too thin for hollowing. That's okay. Like this model, it's a little bit too thin. I'm not going to waste my time hollowing it out. But there's a lot of detail, and this is going to be in the front of the model. So now you need to choose what details are you going to preserve and what details are you going to sacrifice. And by sacrifice, you, you're giving them to the supports to hold on to because you will have some scarring and you will lose some details. I chose to orientate the leg this way because the front of the leg is going to be towards your viewer and the back of the leg or the underside of the leg is going to be a little bit more hidden. So I chose to preserve those spikes at the top and any spikes facing forward. The spikes underneath, if I have those and I'm trying to support them at the moment, but if I don't get them, it's okay. I'll just have to live with it. Next up, I want to show you the tail. Now, the tail I could have hollowed in Mesh Mixer, but I thought I'd just show you the hollowing in G2Box as well. You kind of want the tail to be positioned uh, generally with the center of mass over itself. Um, otherwise, it's going to start pulling too much on the one side and maybe dislodge it from the build plate. I kind of want to go with an orientation um, like this, but I know I'm going to have to add some support maybe by the key. Go to um, hollow and change the wall size. This one goes very thin. Again, I'm just saying as a basis, go for about a 1.8 and hit hollow. It's going to start and it's going to run through the model and you can watch it actually hollowing out the whole thing. It's pretty cool. Next, go to dig hole and you need to add holes individually. 
I left the, the option to keep whole. I don't know why the option is there, but it's uh, I left it on. You can just click on those little um, those little caps later on and delete them. So this is the hollowing and um, creating holes inside of Tutorbox. I prefer to do it in Mesh Mixer. You have a little bit more control. Again, I'm just adding some keys to the, um, I'm adding some supports to the keys. Okay, so I showed you how to do the hollowing in Tutorbox as well as generating your drainage holes. And guys, that is it for today. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down below. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. This helps me make more videos. And for you troopers, you absolute gems that made it to the end of this video, let me know what you'd like to see in the next video. Comment down below, type it down. I'll, hey, I'll respond to every single one. Trust me, like just, just, just do it. Okay, I'm gonna carry on. And um, again, you guys made it to the end of the video.